Swimming Pool International, the Swimming Pool Podcast. A warm welcome to our International Swimming Pool Podcast. This time a little bit different as we are both in different cities in Europe. Where are you, Angela? I'm actually today in Barcelona, and I have to wow. say we have springtime. It's warm, it's sunny, it's nice. We, do, we don't have water, but the rest is really good. And how about yes, you, Michael? Yes, that, that, that well, tell me a little bit more about uh, uh, the dry uh, thing in Barcelona. I've heard so much about it. And uh, I even uh, understood that uh, you are being uh, uh, you are on a ration for uh, for water. Only allowed so much water a day. Is this true? Yes, in fact, it is true, and it's also the first time in my life I I experienced this kind of uh, thing. And you know, like when you're little, some people were talking about there might be you know no f no fresh water and you think oh my god no i cannot believe this this is so far away but it is true and yes uh, we can only use we have a restriction of water 200 uh, liter per day and person and first i didn't even know what does it mean no so i really started now a little bit to count and uh, collect water everywhere, you know, when you are washing dishes, the water which is maybe running at the beginning, I collect. So now I have actually a little bit of a feeling what does it mean 200 liters per person a day. It's not as bad as you think, but if you have, like me, a lot of flowers in the garden and it's not hot summer time yet, uh, then again it's maybe less than you think. <laughs> So yeah, it's a it's a very frightening situation to be honest, and you can see how nature is suffering. And uh, I I'm really yeah. cautious about it. And a lot of people, of course, we talk about it. It's a, it's a it's an ongoing topic, and it's yeah, it's it the world has changed in this kind of sense, really. Yes, and as you uh, you just asked me, where am I? Well, I'm in the Netherlands, in the, in Amsterdam, and we have the opposite problem. We actually have too much water. Yeah, how is that? Uh, <laughs> I we, don't know we what have feels. had dry, we have had dry summers as well, but then in uh, October, November last year, it stopped. It started raining and it almost never stopped. So now the whole bottom, uh, the the ground, everything is full of water, and uh, we are now prepared for the dry summer. So you see, only. A thousand or fifteen hundred kilometers away, and it's completely different situation. It's really a crazy world, I would say, with the climate change. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, send us water. Anyway, it, please. It is always good to uh, talk to you again, and uh, this time uh, at a distance. And uh, we have an, a very interesting topic today, I think. And uh, what is this topic? Yes, today we thought about um, talking about stainless steel. This is something we are both working with. It's uh, we have to say, but um, we don't want only to talk about us. We want to talk about it a little bit also in general. It is a very beautiful product which we are both very connected to. So we thought, uh, why not tell you a little bit more? And uh, of course, our topic is swimming pools. So, yeah, how can we work with stainless steel and what kind of um, parts are possible with a pool? Right. Yeah, that is indeed a very, very uh, interesting topic. Some people say it's, it's very complicated, uh, but I think uh, we will make it easier for uh, the interested uh, listeners and uh, how they can, you know, have a very nice pool which uh, doesn't show any corrosion or any other wear uh, of the product. And the first thing I would like to talk about in this sense is that there are so many different materials available in the market, so many different grades of stainless steel, 
but we both actually only use two uh, based on our experience in the swimming pool market. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about, uh, let's say, the first material, the most standard material that uh, you use for swimming pool uh, products? And what is it called? Yes, it's called, uh, what we are commonly using is, and as you said, there is a lot of confusion. Um, and also, um, it's very good to understand that there are different kinds of stainless steel. So we are using the 316 L and that means is a stainless steel um, has this stainless steel has a low carbon content so it's making it highly valuable and corrosion resistant and I know that you are working with the um, 316 Ti and we mm. are both are working also with the 900 for L and uh, yeah and we for example we also buy our stainless steel here in Germany so we really know actually where it comes from and we know that it is a very very good quality we are working with and that's very important and I learned something already when we talked about something before that you told me something what is also very interesting to know about uh, different kinds of stainless steel in the pool yes so um, uh, there is a difference between 316 l or uh, 316 ti which are we, we it's not necessary to go in depth uh, uh, about the differences because it's mainly used in the same surroundings the same application and it's both suitable for standard uh, swimming pool uh, water and uh, I would say 316L, 316TI is what's commonly used for the private pools, I would say worldwide. If you have this uh, high standard, you will achieve uh, um, uh, uh, corrosion resistance and other uh, topics that we will cover later on uh, in, the, in, the, in the podcast. Uh, there is also this very high-end uh, material called 904L and this is really for special, um, some special pools like uh, seawater sea filled like in Greece and uh, in thermal beds where you have a salt, a salt bath where you can almost float uh you need these higher grades uh, to be able to resist the salt and um, yeah what can you tell about uh, salt chlorinators and stainless steel yes uh, because this is also a question we are oftenly asked with customers and yeah most of the salt chlorinators uh, which some are marked as low salt uh, chlorinators or low salinity chlorinators are definitely um, usable for this kind of stainless steel so if you have this uh, chlorinators you have no problem at all because it controls it let's say automatically and and what is the uh, what is the then uh, people always talk about uh, the salt contents and so on and uh, what is the maximum uh, salt on the on the 316L or 316TI uh, we are saying a maximum chloride content of 500 milligrams per liter is not a problem at all for the 316L stainless steel, so this is something you can easily, you know, use in this kind of, yeah, for this kind of stainless steel. Ah, okay, uh, okay, you you would uh, use different uh, words, but for the listeners uh, uh, who don't know so much about chlorine and the content and so on, we could say maximum 0.5% salt diluted in the water. Okay, quite interesting. And uh, the higher degree, uh, which, as I said, we use uh, um, a lot in Greece, where apparently certain customers prefer to have water from the sea in their pools. 
and uh, there we use this 904L because it is suitable for up to 3% salt. And uh, I think with this dry, this dry, this drought that you have in Barcelona and so on, seawater pools may be the future. Because if there's one thing that we have enough, then it's seawater. Yes, this is something, of course, what is kind of recommended here because uh, it will be uh, for private pools, it will be very hard to, to reach that 200 liter per day. No, if you have a pool, then you really um, exceed this very easily. The problem with, with sea, if really, if you take the Mediterra Mediterranean seawater in your pool, you know, you really have to be careful. It's not about a stainless steel, actually. It's about all the parts you have in the pool, no? So this need to be, um, yeah, very well considered if this is the uh, good way or if you rather prefer a mix, um, you know, if this is a, a good solution like this. But yeah, a pool is a pool and uh, it's still something you want to have, no? So... Yeah, and you, you also told me that, uh, or I heard, that besides the salt uh, content, there's also some kind of an index. Can you tell us a little bit uh, on this, uh, uh, what, what does this mean and how is it called? Yes, we are working, I mean, we cons we tell our customers, uh, you can uh, work with the Langelier saturation index it's called and there um, you can measure actually to corrosiveness of the water and here it's very interesting to find it's not only about the uh, um, TDS the total dissolved solids in the water because there you have like for example if you take 1200 TDS or you double it's still in the range the interesting thing is that you need to also see other water parameters and take them into consideration. And this is also like the water temperature. Of course, you will not influence this water temperature <laughs> so much. It is what it is, no? Or you have a heat pump, but then you have to control, kind of control this as well. And it's about the uh, hardness of the water and the pH in the water. So all of these taking together you need to put into alignments and there is like in the index says if you are if you're at zero it's the perfect situation with this index but it's ah. still okay if you have minus uh, 0 0.3 you go more to corrosion if you put this into this index you will see it and if you exceed right. plus 0 0.3 then you go into the scale of formation which you also don't want to have so but if you are in this limit between uh, the minus 0 0.3 and the plus 0 0.3 you're very very fine and I always think it's not only good for stainless steel it's also good for your health to control your water no and I I, I never understand how uh, you can put like chlorine like crazy or you go your pH you don't control and how you want to swim in this water you know so I always <laughs> think it's an interesting thing yes. yeah but the Langelier index you can look it up and uh, try it out and then you can find your perfect water quality okay I, I, I surely will and so you have, uh, you know, some things that you have to consider when you uh, uh, want to have stainless steel in your pool. One is the salt co content, the, and then you have your Langelier uh, index. And an, uh, another thing that is also very important is that, uh, that you may, should make sure when using 316L or 316TI, that all the material, all the stainless steel in the pool is of equal grade. Because as soon as one is lower than the, the lower or higher than the other, the lower one will start to work as a sink anode and it will create little particles uh, in the water which will fall down on the higher grade and that's how you get uh, rust. We hear so many times in the market, oh, uh, I have this beautiful nozzle and it's rusting and you told me this is not possible. And then we start to ask questions, 
what else do you have in the pool? And then, and what material is it? And then you easily come to the conclusion, oh, a certain part has lower quality, this uh, creates the rust. Even if your Langelier index or your salt content is okay, if there is a lower quality uh, material in the pool, this could very likely create uh, problems. I find and that very question. interesting, to be honest. Um, you know, this is something yes. sometimes we don't talk about it or customers also don't ask, no? But I think it's a no. very interesting fact that it should be all yes, the, yes. And, uh, the same material. Well, it, it, it's a very nice material, but you just have to make sure that all the parameters are fine uh, according to the uh, specification made done by the, the manufacturer and as long as you do that you will have no problems your whole life with stainless steel and that very nice and that leads me to the question uh, why should we choose stainless steel what are the advantages maybe Michael you can say something about that uh, well, like I just ended uh, in the uh, previous uh, sentence, uh, if you maintain it properly and you have your parameters all in order, it's extremely du uh, durable and it will last a lifetime and uh, probably also of the next generations in the family. And so that's one of the topics, but there are more. Yeah, I would like to say um, it's, it is really a beautiful upgrade in your pool. And I never understand when you have, you ha we both, we have seen so beautiful pools in our industry. And then you look at it and you think, oh, oh what a beautiful pool. And then you see a plastic skimmer. I mean, for me, it's like it ruins the whole thing, to be honest. It's not only because I work uh, with stainless steel, but really it is a very beautiful, as you said, stable, long-lasting pro uh, product. And it doesn't bleach out like s plastic skimmers. You know, they, they bleach out if you think you need to p take it into pink. And it, they break eventually. Like, you know, I live here in Spain and I know how plastic breaks when you have a two you know you have a, the first year it looks okay the second year you know like i'm not only talking about the stuff in the pool but eventually they break and stainless steel just doesn't and uh, right. yeah it's also a very flexible product you know like we have customers they say okay can you uh, customize something it's not a problem with stainless steel we make it we even we even have a jet it's called angie and we only made it for a customer who wanted to have, like, for their jacuzzi, a special product made from stainless steel. Ah, yes, yes. Now, I I have to agree with the flexibility. It is uh, relatively easy to fulfill customers' wish wishes to the, the dream pool. And uh, talking about dream pools uh, and creating a dream pool, can you tell us a little bit more of, about the stainless uh, pu uh, uh, stainless steel products that you uh, recommend to uh, uh, customers from your product lines? Yes, uh, we are actually manufacturing since since yeah since about uh, fifty years parts uh, inbuilt wow. parts in the pool and yeah we are manufacturing skimmers just a small overview skimmers nozzles bottom drains broom connections uh, covers for the lights so all the parts you actually see in the pool and also inside <laughs> also we have wall uh, transitions uh, cable box everything made of stainless steel and yeah and uh, coming a little bit more deep into this um, for example, our skimmers, you know, we we have, there was a many years and they were like a square, uh, always a square skimmer. And nowadays uh, we have, of course, we have a very, very wide range of skimmers. And uh, for example, nowadays we have the slim skimmers. So they really look stylish. They look modern. 
and we have always three sizes for example so we call it like b400 b500 b600 and the interesting thing with the skimmers is that uh, we also have skimmers where you can take the water level very high in your pool so it looks like a uh, infinity spool pool even it's a skimmer is a skimmer pool made of stainless steel of course and then we have another skimmer uh, where you can take the basket out from the pool side not uh, as you know of many many years you know you take the basket out from the from the outside and you need a hole in the stone but we have a skimmer where you take the basket from the inside out and so you don't need to make any hole in your beautiful surrounding of your pool this is okay yeah and then uh, for the nozzles and the drains we have them in square we have them in round many variety and one more thing i really want to like to say because we always adapt to the type of the pool that means if we have like a stainless steel pool or a concrete pool or liner pool we will have the right product for this kind of pool it means it has it means it has a different ending like a flange or without flange yeah so you see i'm really getting into my motion <laughs> But yes, I would rather no, that's, uh, that's, want to uh, know, Michael, what you are actually uh, manufacturing. Yes. Well, because the other there day are, uh, there are similarities and there are differences uh, between uh, our and uh, ours, um, let's say ours and your products. Uh, when it comes to all the different pool types, we uh, do do the same. Uh, there, uh, when you have a stainless steel pool or concrete or a or a, a fiberglass pool, uh, we have different built-in parts to make it uh, possible. And but that, so this is the simil similarity. But uh, the products itself are uh, dif dif uh, different but complementary. So you have inlet nozzles and you have main drains, and we have. Uh, in the same design or same style, round or square, we make a hydro massage for uh, the perfect wellness in your pool. Uh, we do uh, water curtains uh, for shoulder massage, another wellness uh, item. And in all the different kinds of shapes and lengths and uh, and this is also where I meant it's very flexible for customer build some customers want to have uh, uh, a, w a water curtain or a water cannon a little bit taller other ones want it a little bit smaller a different shape of the mouth it's all uh, possible because it's handmade and uh, of course last but not least we do uh, uh, our counter currents our jet streams are with stainless steel face plates, either polished or brushed, brushed, and uh, in different shapes again. So, you know, combining the uh, the water treatment uh, from Benke with the uh, wellness from uh, Flufo, you are on your way to uh, your dream pool. I and actually um, can feel it, and I uh, while you were talking about the uh, the water uh, water uh, curtain and so on, I think everyone or most people of us know uh, as we like pools, we have been standing above a shower in the pool, no, and it's mostly stain stainless steel, no, and you have your neck massaged, and uh, yeah, it's uh, of yes, course yes, yes, and yeah, and it it really really upgrades your pool. It, uh, the whole total package of stainless steel is something completely different than uh, other materials. And, uh, well, uh, our listeners probably would also like to know uh, if, he has some, if they have something like this in the pool, how should it be maintained? How can you make sure that it lasts forever? Yes, for us, I mean, I think there's a difference between your products and the ones we are working with because m our products mostly are underwater so of course you can when while you have uh, you i mean you should always maintain your pool it's like a car right you you g go your with yeah. your car to a regular check up and this is also what you have to do with a pool it's a very big part 
to have that pool such a long time as we have said so if you are in the in the course of cleaning your pool and you don't have so much water in the pool it's a good thing for example with a nozzle sometimes if you can unscrew the nozzle just to take a mild soap and a very soft cloth and just clean it a little bit like you would clean your car this is something you should do with your pool as well and i think yeah for your it's a bit different because your your parts are mostly the the curtains y yes out of the water S some some are uh, especially water curtains are outside the pools but the others like uh, hydro massage and uh, swim jet uh, are of course also the same uh, like yours in the water but for things like water curtains okay we basically it's also not a lot of maintenance if you regularly just polish it with a soft cloth to uh, to get rid of uh, possible raindrops, which you would see like on a car, you could also see this uh, uh, a little bit. And if you're not satisfied every now and then, and I can't tell you how often, but less than once a year, you, you, you polish it uh, with a special stainless steel cleaner uh like ferroclean uh, visco but there are many others which you could you know basically uh buy in the do-it-yourself shops so really there is not a lot of maintenance and um, yes and this brings us to a, a another very uh interesting addition to stainless steel can you tell us a little bit about it angela Yes, I know what you mean. And we did make a podcast just before, I think, or one before it was where we talked about the black line, because we have our stainless steel, you and me, now also in black. And yes, yes. so it's something very outstanding. And now we had a little time since the last time we talked about it to feel it really how the market reacts to it and i do have to say i've been traveling this year a bit and i was in going from south europe to really north europe and people are they just love it because they say and um, you know it's something different uh for the pool and it really everybody kind of agrees that it probably very very looks very nice in a in a gray dark gray light gray kind of pool so we have both and me you and me we have all our stainless steel parts now in black it's called black line and for you it's called black diamond that's oh i love that one actually and <laughs> so yeah we have our pool yes. yeah all the parts are in black we can even uh mix them so if you think okay yes yes, yes michael say something and, for and i must be must be honest uh when we uh when we la launched this we didn't know what to expect from the feedback from the market and so and we were we are overwhelmed with positive feedback from from pool builders from uh distributors that uh everybody seems to love this uh black diamond black diamond uh line and uh, the only thing uh, where we are restricted is on size. So a very big water curtain uh, cannot be done in black line. But there we have the Cobra Carbon in black. which But inside the pool we are the same as with you. All the parts uh, are available in, uh, in uh, black line. And so we will see this summer where it's going to. Uh, the feedback is very positive and uh, we are looking forward to it and uh, but uh, like I said it was it surprised us a little bit and uh, but now of course we are quite happy about it yes the big success okay, and I think it would be nice if our listener if somebody really has it already in their pool that they please send us some photos that would be really lovely yes. to see yes and uh well, this uh, brings us uh, to the uh, end of the p podcast. And uh, so, Angela, tell me, what did you learn today? I learned, I love stainless steel after this podcast even more than I did before. <laughs> I think it's such a really, such a nice product, such a beautiful 
element we have here we created you know we have in this world uh, of course we like it for pools but stainless steel of course is used uh, in a lot of other um, applications as well it is a very beautiful product and i learned um, something also very interested in the for the pool industry that you really have to use a good stainless steel and always the same quality of the material uh, of the 316L or the other one we have mentioned in the pool and then it that you cannot take a lower grade because then that creates problems. So, right, Michael, right. what have you learned? Yes, well, since uh, you are more in the water treatment than uh, we are, uh, you came with uh, additional uh, information uh, that that is also important next to uh, just the salt water content, the salt content in the water, and that's this uh, special index. So for me, that was uh, uh, something very interest interesting to learn. And uh, yes, so. Thank you very much. Uh, I d it, d it didn't feel like you were, uh, uh, whatever the distance is from Amsterdam to Barcelona, so far away. It felt like we were sitting together somewhere on a terrace discussing, uh, discussing stainless steel. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, I would like to say you can write us with any comments or questions at mail at uh, sorry let me uh, repeat the email address mail at swimming pool minus podcast dot com one more time mail at swimming pool minus podcast dot com goodbye danke gracias merci Kirche. dankjewel and spasiva bye bye swimming pool international the swimming pool podcast mm.